much more to me. Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego, every Sunday from 4 to 5 p.m. You can also stream the show at am1170theanswer.com. My website is educateforlife.org, and you can get a recording of this show uh, tomorrow if you'd like. And uh, if it really uh, hits a nerve and, and something you want to focus on, something you want to replay, uh, just visit my site, educateforlife.org. We have a very special topic we're going to be covering this week. You may or may not know this. There are more slaves in the world today than ever before in world history. More than 21 million slaves worldwide. In 1850, an average slave in the American South cost the equivalent of around $40,000 in today's money. Today, a slave costs about $90 on average worldwide. Pretty astonishing facts uh, to hear. And a lot of people are just completely unaware of this. I have some very special guests today on the show with me. Uh, the first one I'd like to introduce is Chief Deputy District Attorney for San Diego County, Summer Steffen, uh, who is a career prosecutor. Summer, thank you so much for being on the thank show today. Thank you for having me and bring, shedding light on an important subject. Absolutely. It's a, it's a big honor to have you on the show. Uh, our second guest is Dr. Jamie Gates, PLNU professor who heads up Churches Against Trafficking. Jamie, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, uh, I would say I headed up, but I just helped pull it together. That's all. Okay, fantastic. And then my third guest is uh, very special to me, too. He's on uh, one of my students at Christian High School in El Cajon. Uh, his name is Michael Bailey, and uh, he's just sitting in here to, to uh, be able to meet and greet some people that are making a difference with their lives and, and having an influence for good uh, on our culture. So, uh, Michael, thanks for being on the show with us. Great to be here. Okay, excellent. So I want to just give a little bit of background for uh, the Chief Deputy District Attorney, Summer Steffen, and um, she has served as Deputy District Attorney in San Diego County for over 25 years, and uh, she's been the Assistant Chief, Chief of the North County Branch, that serves about a third of the San Diego County's population. She's been the Chief of the Sex Crimes and Human Trafficking Division. In 2012, District Attorney Bonnie DeManis appointed her as Chief Deputy District Attorney. She's tried over 100 jury trials, including sexually based and special circumstance homicides, sexually violent predators, child molestation, sexual assault, child abuse, school shooting, and human trafficking related cases. She's also been selected uh, as one of only two prosecutors for California on the governor's task force for high risk sex offenders and sexually violent predators, which created recommendations for be best practices in public safety. She also spearheaded the Know the Price Coalition and the campaign that addresses sexual assault involving college students. She's been the recipient of a lot of awards, state and federal, including the FBI's Commendation for Organized Crime Prosecution, the Outstanding Achievement and Chuck Nickel Awards for Professional Excellence and Statewide Impact in Public Safety. And uh, she was also recently named, this is my favorite award, Angel of Anti-Human Trafficking by the Bilateral Safety Corridor Coalition. That's a pretty uh, amazing uh, recommendation. And people are calling you an angel. That's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Summer, thank you so much for all that you're doing. I think it's incredible. And all our listeners out there, I just want to encourage you to pay attention uh, to what our guests have to say because they know what they're talking about. Dr. Jamie Gates, he is a cult cultural anthropologist and director at Point Loma Nazarene University Center for Justice and Reconciliation. He co-leads the NIJ project, measuring the extent and nature of gang involvement and sex trafficking. He's going to talk about this on the show today, uh, about the research they've been doing, and uh, they're, they're getting a, a greater understanding of what's happening nationwide. He co-chairs the Research and Data Committee of the San Diego County Advisory Council on Human Trafficking and CSEC. He mentors campus organizers against human trafficking. He's, he's also an ordained minister. He serves uh, as a faith-based organizer for Faith Alliance Against Slavery and Trafficking Churches, uh, I'm sorry, Trafficking, Churches Against Trafficking, Interfaith Center for Worker Justice, and the Wesleyan Holiness Consortium Freedom Network. Uh, they've also got some amazing things going on at Point Loma Nazarene with scholarships for people who have been victims of sex trafficking, which is absolutely amazing. I wanted to start off, um, now that those introductions took up the ha half of the first segment there, um, but I think they're well worth it. I wanted to start off by asking you, um, uh, Summer, uh, is it okay for me to address you by your first name? Please. Yeah? Okay. 
uh, I wanted to ask you how you got involved in this and how long you've been involved in it. What, what motivated you to make such a difference in this particular area? Well, these victims in the area of human trafficking are the ones that have the smallest voice, if you will. They're the ones that don't feel that society cares, uh, that they're just, they're just the throwaway kids in society, the throwaway people. And we don't believe in throwaway people. Every human being has their dignity. So I was drawn to those types of prosecutions where... Um, they're the most difficult and where the victims are the most vulnerable. And I wanted to bring the years of experience that I've had doing child molest and sexual assault cases to this new category that's always been around, but finally recognized through the state passing the first human trafficking law in 2006. Oh, I want to get back to that, um, how you said it's always been around and, uh, it's interesting because there's so there it seems like the knowledge of it is increasing but the question is is it also increasing or is this is a problem that's just people are becoming more aware of uh, so that that is uh, very significant and so you're giving a voice to the voiceless is what you're doing through your through your life and your uh, energy along with an amazing team and the DA's office and and everywhere in the county uh, it's very so encouraging to hear about what you're doing it's uh, amazing um, and then dr. Gates same question for you. Uh, why, what motivated you to get involved and how long have you been involved in uh, fighting human trafficking? You bet. Uh, I've been at uh, Point Loma Nazarene University since 2001. And in 2003, we started the Center for Justice and Reconciliation as a way to get students more deeply connected and faculty and staff more deeply connected to some of the more important justice social movements, working in worker justice, working in fair trade, working in immigration rights issues, racial justice. But in 05, 2005, students started coming to me and saying, hey, what are we doing about human trafficking? Um, I had a mouthful of teeth and said, well, tell me more. And so we started looking at Cambodia and, 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 and in Nepal, and we were looking at you know, overseas Thailand and Philippines, and, and early on, students were paying attention to what's happening overseas. But very soon after that, uh, by 2007, 2008, uh, we were starting to look, hey, so what is, what's happening locally? And by 2009, started attending sheriff's task force meetings and, and just was one of the scholars that was starting to show up at all the meetings that, uh, that were happening in a growing network of people in San Diego that's, that were starting to pay deeper and deeper attention to what was going on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the way I became aware of this issue, I wasn't even very much aware of it until a few years back. Uh, one of my students actually did a project on uh, human trafficking yeah. and, you know, during the project made me aware of a lot of issues that I was completely unaware of. And I guess, you know, for our listeners out there, there's a lot of people that know nothing about this issue. And so a big focus of what I want to talk about today is uh, how our listeners can get involved with making a difference and what you guys think, um, how they can they can uh, extend your reach uh, to make a difference and, and stop this kind of stuff from going on. Um, so with all this that's, that's happening, do you think that this is something that people are just becoming more aware of or uh, is it something that's increasing as a problem? Uh, summer? I think it's it's both. Um, so it's really important to recognize that because we are a country of laws, and that is the hallmark of the United States, that this is really, in terms of laws, it's a baby law. The first law for human trafficking didn't pass till the year 2000. So while we've had laws against burglary, robbery, rape, murder, we have not had an actual law that addresses human trafficking until the federal law in 2000. And then not until 2006 did the state pass, state of California pass, the same human trafficking laws. So once you have a law, what that makes a big difference because now law enforcement prosecutors can actually use those laws to prosecute. So this has always been a huge human rights violation, mm -hmm. but you can't walk up and arrest someone for a human rights violation. There are many times that you wish you could, but once we had the laws, it allowed us to galvanize the forces and to start looking and investigating. And once you begin that process, it brings it out from the shadows into the light. Wow. Uh, my guests today are uh, Dr. Jamie Gates, a Point Loma Nazarene University District Attorney and Prosecutor, 
um, Summer Steffen and also Michael Bailey, one of my students sitting in with us. We're going to be right back. This is a very important subject, very important topic to understand, get a grip on, and find out how you can make a difference and be involved. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Join the Creation and Earth History Museum for our 10th Annual Museum Day Family Festival, Saturday, September 26th. Hi, this is Jason Payne, museum curator, and I want to personally invite you and your families to a free, fun-filled event including new exhibits, testimonies from leading scientific experts, meet NASA astronaut Colonel Jeffrey Williams, and many others. Activities for the entire family. So join us Saturday, September 26th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go online to learn more at creationsd.org or call 619-599-1104. 619-599-1104. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 7.30 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Jeans. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. I will cast my cares on you. You're the anchor of my hope, the only one who's in control. I will cast Thanks for tuning in to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer, in San Diego every Sunday, 4 to 5 p.m. You can also stream the show at am1170theanswer.com. My website is educateforlife.org. And you know, my job, what I do is I help people answer hard questions that pertain to the Bible. And you know, one of the issues, the Bible teaches very clearly that slavery is, is wrong, that all people are equal, that God created all people equal. The Bible teaches us that we're all of one father, all from one blood. And so it says there is no Jew or Greek. There is no slave or free. There is no male or free, female. We are all one in Christ. And so uh, this is important. My guest today our uh, uh, Chief Deputy District Attorney, San Diego County, of San Diego County, Summer Steffen, and also Dr. Jamie Gates, uh, Point Loma Nazarene University, uh, both who are very involved in fighting human trafficking. Their websites are abolishhumantrafficking.com and fight human trafficking SD. I'm, I'm sorry, yes, fight human trafficking SD.com. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So um, I wanted to start off the second segment here by asking uh, Summer, how do you define human trafficking? Exactly what is that? Okay, so under the law, it's defined as a deprivation of a human being's liberty for the purpose of sexual exploitation or labor exploitation. And that can be done both with physical violence or through force or through deceit, duress, coercion, and other psychological factors. The most common form that we see is when a trafficker uses a young lady, that's the most common in San Diego, for the purpose of prostitution, okay. for prostituting her out, or for pornography. So that's considered human trafficking. And for labor, we see it in janitorial or other services where people are working without pay, their papers are being withheld, and they have a fear, a psychological fear for their families or themselves. Okay, so interesting. You, you said that from a federal perspective, it's only been recently that laws have been enacted that actually prevent this from happening. So prior to these laws being enacted, does that mean that it was actually legal uh, to do something like that? We had different forms, but we needed to look for things like kidnap, movement across state lines, the law defined it in a very simple manner, in, in a way that it conforms with how it's been defined around the world where it comes to human rights. Okay. Um, and I, my understanding is that, it, did you want to add anything to that, uh, Dr. Gates? 
Um, just as we as we're thinking about what human trafficking is, uh, it depends on what age you're talking about as well. So, with uh, adults, uh, that's anyone eighteen and over. You know, uh, a commercial sexual act brought on by force, fraud, or coercion is sex trafficking or labor. Yeah. And the labor act, a coerced labor act by force, fraud, or coercion, is is a uh, labor trafficking violation. But for anyone under eighteen, any commercial sexual act that is wrought on someone under the age of 18, under the age of consent, uh, is a sex trafficking or labor trafficking violation. And commercial sexual act, you mean somebody's getting paid for... for it, it could be money, it could be uh, goods, services in exchange for that sexual act that someone else benefits from. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I, was, I, I was reading up on this and uh, my understanding is that sex trafficking or human trafficking is the second most profitable uh, method of illegal, you know, crime. I, I imagine the first would be drugs, uh, potentially. Uh, is that correct? Yes, drugs is still first in the world. Yeah. Second is human trafficking. And that's because when you traffic in humans, you have a less chance of being caught by law enforcement because your victim is not going to speak. You, you have your victim under so much control mm -hmm. through fear or through psychological uh, means including shame, the victim's own shame, that holds them in the chains. Uh, and so the traffickers have realized that this is a reusable, sadly, product mm. that allows for less det detection. So it's become very popular. We know that in the United States, it's about $9.5 billion industry. Wow. And that California is the fourth destination for human trafficking. Now, um, you know, I know a lot of our listeners are probably out there thinking to themselves, I had no idea about this. I wasn't aware of this. I mean, I, I knew about drugs a long time ago, you know, in the drug industry, but uh, this is something that's kind of come to light recently. Is there a reason why it's people haven't known about it for so long or what, what is the reason why? So if I could speak to that just for yeah. a second, Kevin, yeah. you know, it's in some ways like us at the university or our students who assumed and rightly assumed that it's happening in other parts of the world, which it certainly is. Yeah. Um, and in some ways it's much more in your face and overt in places like Thailand, for example. Yeah. Um, but uh, people weren't asking the question here locally. Um, and most people are surprised to, and, and even now assume that when you talk about victims of labor or sex trafficking, you're talking about people who have been transported across the border. Hey, this is San Diego. We live in San Diego, Tijuana. People have come across the San Diego, Tijuana border. It, that's just simply not the full picture, right? So the the the, the greater truth is that over eighty percent of those who have been caught by uh, law enforcement in uh, in trafficking cases are U.S. victims, U.S. perpetrators. So wow. our citizens, our neighbors, our sons and daughters doing this to our sons and daughters in the United well, States. I would never have guessed that. Um, so how does this happen? I mean, if if you were to say, so you you would tell our listeners, here's what you need to keep your eyes out for. Uh, what is it that they need to be uh, you know, the radar needs to be aware of uh, in order to, you know, call. We have a, a, a phone number here, Victims of Slavery and Human Trafficking. Call 1-888-373-7888. And then you've got, you have the text here. Uh, just text be free to information. If, if uh, our listeners see something, what should they keep their eyes open for? What you see is uh, it's happening a lot in the schools. You see recruitment of girls with the social internet. In the high schools? In the high schools. Oh, goodness. And sometimes and middle, school. middle schools, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you see is a recruitment that seems very simple, like to for kids to want to belong, to go to a party, to become a model, to be part of a, a video, a music video or a person posing as a Romeo, as, as someone who wants to befriend and be the boyfriend. And okay, so pretty soon it turns ugly. So you're saying that there are high school students that are getting other high school students to get involved in this? Yes, you have it as a, an organized scheme. So you have somebody who may not be going to the high school that's an older gentleman but he's going to use a younger male that can pose as the boyfriend in the school to recruit the younger girls to invite them to a party hey i know this guy and you can come to this party and just take a few um, photographs and you're going to make all this money uh, gifts and then you now have a trend of girls that are 
using being used to recruit other girls. Wow. Okay, that's that's a really big deal. Yeah, the stereotype or and maybe the statistical reality is that most of the perpetrators are in sex trafficking in San Diego County are guys recruiting other recruiting women, but increasingly we're seeing this incidence of of women recruiting and some of whom themselves are the recruiters. They're they're the ones benefiting financially. They're the ones uh, um, recruiting other younger girls uh, to get involved. And let's not forget that there are also boy victims as well. Um, and particularly amongst runaway and foster care youth, we find male victims uh, in certain parts of the city. Okay. Michael, Bailey, I wanted to give you a chance to ask a question. Go ahead. Oh, um, you guys were saying that there's a large portion of this is happening in high schools and middle schools. So um, what can people my age do to help prevent or fight this? You need to know the symptoms so we see a lot of truancy so with some of the girls they're absent on friday and monday because they go on a track they call it where they are being used as slaves to perform sexual acts in different jurisdictions going into orange county to las vegas if you notice these things and you ask the person hey are you okay were you sick and there is an evasive answer, then that's a red flag. If you see a friend that all of a sudden has um, an expensive purse or her nails done, and you know that she can't afford that, that's another red flag. Tattoos, because branding is pretty common from the trafficker, uh, that's another red flag. More uh, kind of a withdrawn, interestingly enough, these girls actually turn more shy as they become exposed to this evil in the world, they turn inwards and they become less talkative in school. So all of these symptoms should be reported to a counselor that maybe didn't pay attention, but now can start paying attention to that young girl. Um, we're going to be right back. We're just out of time on our first segment, but this is a very important and inter interesting conversation. My guests are Chief Deputy District Attorney of San Diego County, Summer Steffen, and also Dr. Jamie Gates. Uh, Point Lemon Nazarene University and uh, one of my students, Michael Bailey. We'll be right back. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Not all home inspections are created equal. Experience matters. Joe DeMars and his team at Housemaster have performed inspections in San Diego for 22 years plus and performed over 10,000 inspections for commercial, multiple family, apartments, and residential. So call before you buy or sell and protect your investment. Call 619-660-7866 or online at sandiego.housemaster.com. Home inspections done right. Guaranteed. 619-660-7866. How can you live in San Diego and miss out on enjoying the water? Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. Just throw these on your roof rack. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619-222-0766. I'm giving it all away. No more hiding, no more stalling. I hear you calling me. And Thanks for tuning in to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer, in San Diego every Sunday, 4 to 5 p.m. Cover all kinds of controversial subjects. And, and uh, this show is a great way for you to stay informed about how you can make a difference in your city and your culture. We've got all kinds of stuff happening around all over the country, all kinds of uh, issues to, to plug in and get involved in. My guests today are uh, City De uh, Deputy Attorney uh, Summer Steffen uh, here in San Diego. She has a long history of prosecuting human trafficking, as well as Dr. Jamie Gates. Uh, he serves uh, at Point Loma Nazarene University with uh, Churches Against Trafficking. Uh, if your church wants to get involved, um, you can contact him at his website. That is fight, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, abolishhumantrafficking.com. And uh, you can plug in and get your church involved to make a difference that way. You can also uh, contact the DA's office if you're aware of human trafficking at fighthumantraffickingsd.com. 
Uh, we just left off. Uh, Michael Bailey just asked a great question, one of my students, and uh, he can maybe come back on the show another time now. Uh, good mm -hmm. job, Michael. And uh, I wanted to give Dr. Gates a chance to answer this question also, and that is, uh, for young people, because this is happening so much in high schools, how can they make a difference uh, and help people get out of this, uh, this criminal activity? Yeah, Michael, great question. And uh, let me just say in part that if you think it's not happening in your neighborhood or in your schools near you, um, I would pay a little closer attention. Um, and um, it is true, I think, in some of what we're finding is that the, uh, the research is showing that the people who are normally most vulnerable are still the most vulnerable. So in neighborhoods that are lower income, in neighborhoods with uh, uh, lower levels of connectedness for students, where students uh, tend to be out on their own or vulnerable, and even at any particular school, the people who are most out on their own, least connected, are, are uh, 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 even, even uh, some with developmental disabilities, for example, are targets, right? So people who are, who are already vulnerable are vulnerable. So I would say if you're, if you're students and you don't have friends who are vulnerable people, you should make friends with people who are vulnerable. But that having been said, it's people, students who are also targeted, who are just emotionally vulnerable, right, are also uh, targeted in this process. So even if you, you, you don't see in, the, in what they're wearing and, and how they're living that they're vulnerable, people who are emotionally vulnerable, uh, particularly young women who are uh, emotionally vulnerable, are, are somebody that you should befriend and be hanging out with and in, invite to your birthday parties and so on, you know? That's great advice. Uh, and I have another question in, that pertains to this. Are the schools actually, um, you know, making an effort to get involved and stop this? And how many times do you have students who say, I, I don't want your help. I, I, I want to be involved in this. Uh, can, can you speak to that? The schools are getting involved, and we have set the standard here in San Diego. We have an amazing person, education, Janae Luttrell, who started... Uh, the system of educating about these issues to her own teachers and staff and detecting and actually was involved in the recent U.S. Department of Education handbook on trafficking in our schools. Mm. So a big part of what is in the national handbook was created here in San Diego in order to educate and to detect and form relationships with law enforcement with regard to truancy so that we are looking for these young girls mostly young girls, like Dr. Gates said, there are young boys also. Uh, so we are doing something. The uh, San Diego Unified has put on a lot of community programs at their high schools to educate parents, but we need to be doing more. What we want to see happen is we want to implement SB 1165. That's the law that says that we want to teach about human trafficking systematically in our schools along with sex education so that all of the kids are armed with this information. So when they, it comes at them, they're prepared. They know it's manipulation. It's a ploy. It's someone trying to make money off of their backs. And I know Dr. Gates is involved with that as well. Yeah, we've been doing research in area public public high schools. And uh, I find the administrators and the teachers and the counselors and the campus staff to be very interested in this question to have to have themselves flagged cases that they know of. Um, and and yet the, the level of training across all districts is just getting off the ground, right? So in the last few years, we've okay. done some trainings. Yeah. Um, parents need to step up and not be skittish about talking about sex, talking about sexual exploitation and, and allowing in middle schools even and high schools, the staff to do well, carefully crafted uh, trainings, which uh, there are there are a limited range of people in the county who can do well crafted trainings like this, but they're here and they're ready to do these trainings. And some of those trainings are already going on. But I would call on parents to be ready and, and to even encourage the principals at their schools to um, uh, to 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 go to encourage this training to allow it to happen across their full range of staff, and because we've got a lot of work to do to get all teachers and all uh, vice principals and principals and counselors, there's a lot of people that need to be better educated on on what's happening right under their noses. That and saying that is not saying that there aren't some uh, really great trainings that are already out there that have been done. There's some good models. Okay, that's great, and then. Um, as far as do you find a lot of success with with prosecuting these cases or uh, I, I mean, 
Are you seeing this move in a really good direction or, or how, how do you feel about how things are going right now? Yes, I think we're in a good place. We've tripled our prosecutions, which means we're doing something right. So has the U.S. attorney here. There has been a great emphasis. We are, Dr. Gates and I, and I think all of us fighting feel the support of the county. Mm. We have an excellent advisory council that is one of a kind where we have education alongside prosecution, law enforcement, victim services, a strong survivor voice, all included where we discuss how do we move our county forward? How do we make an impact? How do we rescue and restore more of the victims? Yeah, and that was kind of where I wanted to go next is, uh, so let's say we have a listener out there and they are involved in human trafficking. Right now, they're struggling with this and they want to get out of it. But they're scared because they think to themselves, well, what's going to happen to me if I get out of this? I don't have resources. I'm going to be in trouble. I'm mm -hmm. going to lose that source of income. Mm -hmm. um, or a lot of the other things that are running through their mind about maybe the danger even to their lives potentially. Um, what, what kind of resources are available to uh, young people who want to exit uh, this, this uh, industry, I guess? There are a lot of resources locally. We need more, but you have a system that understands those struggles. We have a lot of victim service providers with their heart in the right place. And this uh, run that's coming to San Diego, the beauty of it on September 12th, the break free run, which you can still register for, allows the proceeds from that run to go to local community services for victims. Uh, generate hope as well as San Diego Youth Services. So there, there, there is help, and the prosecutors and law enforcement understand they're not going to be judging the victim by saying you made these bad choices. So they're not going to be going to juvenile hall or something. Is that will they end up in juvenile hall or if they are victims of human trafficking? they should not, under our law, end up in juvenile hall. We do see that some of these girls end up committing other survival crimes like burglary and robbery mm. because they're trying to survive out there on yeah. the street. And that might end them in juvenile hall. But as a victim of human trafficking, if they come forward to law enforcement, we are here to help them. Okay, Kevin, not too long ago, the default assumption of law enforcement was that somebody caught up in prostitution was a participant in that and, and was somehow benefiting, somehow willfully involved. The default has shifted to first seeking social services, first seeing a victim, and then worrying about some of these other complexities. That's fantastic, yeah. So if you're out there listening and you're struggling with this, don't fear. Um, people want to help you. They don't want to harm you. They want to help you. We're going to be right back. Um, we're discussing human trafficking. We have uh, a few experts here and a very interesting show, very helpful, very informative. We'll be right back. historic American beauty to your home today with genuine Amish furniture. It's built in the USA from solid cherry wood with a bourbon finish. Or choose alternative woods and finishes to accent your home's decor. You'll find it all at Tucker's Valley Furniture. For over 65 years, the Tucker family has served San Diego County. Still family owned, Cash and Carry and Tucker's Valley Furniture. Two stores, both right across the street at Main and Mollison in El Cajon. Learn more at tuckersvalleyfurniture.com. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. 
Do you have one button espresso machines in your home or business? They make delicious coffee drinks, but they're not maintenance free. Express Fix Coffee is San Diego's source for coffee and espresso machine repair, sales, and service. Call Dave Martin at Express Fix Coffee for new and used espresso machines, repairs, parts, and accessories. They'll save you time and money. Call Express Fix Coffee at 619-867-3853. Learn more at expressfixcoffee.com. There's got to be more than going back and forth From doing right to doing wrong Cause we were taught that's who we are well, come on. Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170 The Answer in San Diego. You can stream the show at am1170theanswer.com. My website is educateforlife.org. You can get a recording of the show if you like. Uh, it's podcast. It's also on the YouTube channel. Uh, so i uh, love to have your feedback. And uh, if you want to contact me by email or Facebook, connect on Facebook, that'd be great. Uh, my guests today are uh, Chief Deputy District Attorney of San Diego County, Summer Steffen, uh, who has been doing this for a long time and made a gigantic uh, difference in uh, the culture here as it, as it uh, pertains to human trafficking, as well as Dr. Jamie Gates with Point Loma Nazarene University. And uh, we're discussing how do you fight human trafficking? How do you get this off the streets? It's a horrible issue, a horrible problem. Um, your own daughter or sister could be somebody that becomes a victim of human trafficking. And it's something we all need to care about. Uh, it's, it's in the schools. You may think, hey, not in my high school, but the, the likelihood is all the way from North County, all the way out to East County, uh, this is an issue we're dealing with. And we need to get involved and not just look the other way and, and hope it's not happening in our, in our town, you know, but uh, it is. And uh, we, we need to face it head on and deal with it. Uh, Dr. Gates, I wanted to ask you over at Point Loma Nazarene, you're, you're with Churches Against Trafficking, and you also have an amazing program that actually offers scholarships, Ashes for Beauty, to victims of trafficking. And um, I'd love if you could share with our listeners uh, more about that. You bet. Thank you. Um, Churches Against Trafficking uh, was started about two years ago. Uh, Church at Rancho Bernardo, uh, Nate Alcorn, and, and uh and, and the church there, along with Point Loma Nazarene and a few other churches, got together with about six of us, uh, six churches represented right there about two years ago. And in the last two years, about 75, almost 80 churches have gathered to, uh, we were gathering monthly and, and every other month to to teach ourselves, to learn what was happening in San Diego. We brought summer in. and Six we, churches all the way up to 80 uh, Yeah, churches. they're close. There's somewhere in the range of 75, 80 churches now that have been paying attention um, and from from very small commitments to very large commitments out of each of these congregations. And so we see it's this movement as as growing churches against trafficking. And so um, we will again, September seventeenth, the third Thursday of every month we meet. Um, and the next one will be at Church of Rancho Bernardo. Um, we on the September seventeenth, it's a really important time. We encourage all church church members, anybody who's interested in this from a congregation, come out and join us here because we're going to strategize next steps. We've, there's all this energy and interest, and we want to talk about some bigger things. That's you know? so exciting. And mm -hmm. and uh, if they want to get involved with this, the website again? Uh, you can go to AbolishHumanTrafficking.com, or you can find Churches Against Trafficking on Facebook. Okay, excellent. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then what about the Ashes for Beauty Scholarship? Yeah, it's actually called the Beauty for Ashes. Oh, sorry. Beauty, Beauty for, for Ashes, Ashes Scholarship. Ashes. If you go to AbolishHumanTrafficking.com, you yeah. can click on there. And find out about it. It's a beautiful thing that came up uh, from our from our, our team that we're, we were we were so involved. We're doing research. We're involved in the social movement in town. You know, for ten years here, and and then we were asking, what's the next step for a university, a Christian university? Yeah. And our cabinet just loved the idea of us being able to give an education to survivors coming out of labor and sex trafficking. So we hit the hit a public campaign, and in four months, people poured in ninety thousand dollars to say yes, this is a good idea. Let's get this off the ground. That's so amazing. it's off the ground. We probably have our first survivors coming to be students here in the spring. Um, it's just getting off the ground this year, um, and we need faithful people over time to continue to to give those students that are coming to us a chance to get through college without any further burden or debt, and given the the great burden that they've carried into life this far. Yeah, that's amazing. That is so exciting. Uh, that That's just very encouraging. Um, I also wanted to ask you, do you have any personal, um, obviously anonymously, but any stories you could you could share with our listeners about people who have been rescued, uh, uh, Susan or, uh, or uh, Jamie? Uh, do you have any uh, stories that you can share that would encourage uh, anybody? Let me just uh, say one that might surprise folks a little okay. bit. Um, I was interviewing somebody who... Um, 
he uh, was a victim of both sex and labor trafficking. Um, was a, a case, one of the few cases that we know of here that was uh, at this point well documented as an international victim was trafficked in our state first up into Northern California and then down into Southern California um, and was being held captive out in East County um, by a church going family. Ah. So the church going family, um, I can't tell you too many details, but this particular family um, would, would uh, this was one case in which he was literally held on the property, occasionally let out with great psychological manipulation, um, was allowed to go out and return for very short moments. And when he was finally rescued out of that situation, it came because he had had enough himself and escaped and was found in one of the canals uh, in San Diego here. So um, what struck me about his particular case is that there were church-going folks who were involved in this and were were um, living double lives, um, and that that's that's uh, disconcerting. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, people use use uh, the church or anything all the time. It happens all the time, whether it's politicians or regular folks who are, uh, for whatever reason, uh, not following uh, the teachings of the the scriptures. So. Uh, crazy stuff. What about uh, you, Summer? Any stories of people that have been rescued? There are a lot of stories of hope. And I think that's what keeps all of us going here, that the resilience of the human spirit. Yeah. We're meant to be free. That's how we were created. We're not meant to be enslaved. Absolutely. And once you give somebody, even if they've been beaten down and told that they're worth nothing and that the only thing they're good for is to to give sex over and over and over, when you give them that dignity, you see them thrive. We've had we have great stories. One, a survivor. She is about to graduate from San Diego State University. This young lady was in the foster care system. Uh, she did not have a good childhood. She was abused. So when she was abused by her trafficker, by comparison, she would tell us. By comparison, he was nice to me compared to my stepfather and what I suffered there. So it's it's a relative situation. Yeah, it's a, extremely sad. But she's about to graduate. She's um, a survivor who helps other survivors. One great story is this amazing mom. You know, she was the hero in this situation in that uh, her daughter left and left like something under the sheets one day, like no one is going to notice she's not there. The mom looked at her Facebook. She figured out she was communicating with this unknown guy. She tracked down her best friend and made her tell the mom who this guy was. She went to the street where the guy was with the uh, picture of her daughter, found him, called police, and they rescued her daughter who had just found out that this guy who claimed he was in love with her was not, that he was just about to sell her on the internet over and over and over to buyers. Wow. So this this mom is a hero. She was going to be in her daughter's business, which is a tough job for parents. But we tell them they need to be. They need to find out what their kids are doing. Yeah. You know in your gut something is wrong. Don't just let it go. Find out what it is before it's too late. Well, wow, that's great advice. I, I think that's so important. I mean, I see that all the time, too, as a teacher. Uh, that it's so important that parents, as parents, we're involved in our kids' lives. We know what's going on. We talk to them on a regular basis. Um, and I, I, just, uh, I just think that's so important what you just shared, that story, that uh, kids left to their own, you know, they get into trouble a lot of times, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the cliche saying the idle, hand, idle hands of the devil's workshop is there's a lot of truth to that uh, in a lot of ways. Can I add just um, as as parents are um, paying more and careful attention to what's happening to their own kids, I would say I'd, I would hope that parents in the church also pay attention to what happens, what's happening to their kids' friends and to the kids that are in the schools that they're that they're in so that, uh, you know, don't just sit by and say, okay, my kid's all tucked away, neat and safe, but... Who, who, who are their friends, but even outside their friendship networks, right? Care about the kids that are um, some of the more vulnerable kids in the schools that you're, that you're attending. Okay, Michael, you have a question? I was just wondering, earlier we talked about um, how students could identify other students that were, like, could possibly be part of this. I was wondering, how students can we discourage the culture that leads to all of this? Oh, boy, that's a great question. <laughs> Good I question. Was, well, that's your, 
you're uh you're, 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 you got a hot bat now radio segments so. uh two hours long yeah. than is, maybe four okay so you're so this question the answer to it is that we have to focus on the demand this is a profit industry people who are doing this unlike the child molesters and sexually violent predators that are doing it for different sadistic reasons the main driving force of human trafficking is money buyers and the only way that you make money is if someone is buying wow. it is the demand people who are buying sex and buying cheap labor knowing there's something wrong with this picture they are driving this industry so i think that we have a hidden culture Okay, uh, sorry to cut you off. Summer. No, it's we're gonna, okay. We're, we're coming up on a break here, and uh, this is very important. I want our listeners to be able to get this completely. So we'll be right back. We are discussing human trafficking, and uh, stay with us. We have one more segment to go. God is changing lives on the streets of Hillcrest. And City on a Hill San Diego engages the community, talking with people, listening to them, and sharing God's love. See the stories at cityonahillsandiego.com. This is your invitation to get involved. Join them for a new worship service the second Saturday of each month at 6 p.m. at Joyce Beers Uptown Community Center. Call for details, 619-354-2511, cityonahillsandiego.com. Sharing faith, hope, and love. What do leading local restaurants have in common? They depend on Express Fix Coffee for new and used coffee and espresso machines, repairs, and affordable monthly service. Dave Martin and his local team provide water filtration services too. Call San Diego's best espresso repair company, serving your home and business. Learn more online at expressfixcoffee.com. Call Express Fix Coffee at 619-867-3853. 619-867-3853. In 1947, Gordon Tucker began serving San Diego County families. Today, the family tradition continues with two stores, Tucker's Valley Furniture and Cash and Carry, both right across the street in El Cajon at Main and Mollison. Whether you want today's modern, eco-friendly furniture or authentic Amish furniture from solid cherry wood built in America, let the Tucker family serve your family. Learn more at tuckersvalleyfurniture.com. A proud sponsor of Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. I will cast my cares on you You're the anchor of my hope The only one who's in control Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego. And you can stream the show all over the world at am1170theanswer.com. My website's educateforlife.com. O-R-G. I want to share a quick verse with you. James 1.27, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. We live in a world that has all kinds of opportunities to do the wrong thing. And uh, we're talking about human trafficking today. And I just want to encourage everybody out there, uh, don't let this this show go in one ear and out the other. Um, this is an issue that is very, very real It may not be right in front of your face, but there are people that are suffering behind the scenes who need help. And for a lot of those people, we're the one. We're the person that that is going to make the difference in that person's life. Every individual counts. And so um, we want to be concerned, not apathetic. Uh, It's it's easy when you see all kinds of problems all around you to get discouraged and to give up. But what we have to focus is on the one person that we can help, one at a time, one at a time, until we make a, a gigantic difference all over the culture and the community. And um, I wanted to pick up where we left off. Michael asked uh, our guest, uh, Dr. Jamie Gates and uh, uh, District Attorney Summer Steffen, how do we stop what's happening? And uh, can you continue with your thoughts, Summer? Yes. Yeah, so, so the demand, the buyer, since, since human trafficking is money-driven, that is what's fueling the trafficking. That is what's making the traffickers go out and get more and more girls and more and more victims. So we have a culture that sort of accepts the buying of sex, and that includes sex from minors and teens. You see someone get really offended if she's under 14, but there is this crazy notion that these girls want to do this. This is the kind of industry that leads to death at age 34, HIV, rampant disease, 
unwanted pregnancies. So nobody wants this life, no matter what we're told. It's not pretty woman. There's no Richard Gere pulling up in a limousine. So, so we need to stop. Everyone needs to have a clear message that buying sex, it's not a wanted thing, that this is illegal. The sheriff, Sheriff Gore, wonderful. He agreed to actually book the people who are buying sex. So uh, these buyers are going to be booked in jail. They're not going to be cited and released anymore. And all of law enforcement is paying attention to it. Wow. That is, that is uh, again, just so significant here. Because um, like you said, our culture has become very sexualized uh, through the, uh, there's rampant pornography use as well, which ultimately uh, a lot of people say, hey, it's a victimless cr crime. But that increase in the acceptance of, uh, sex, you know, in general, uh, what we would call immorality, uh, actually leads to greater problems. Uh, yes, go ahead, Jamie. I was just thinking about the, uh, the, the data, the statistics on the number of uh, even church related folks who are engaged in pornography and the click, the clicking around, uh, and the, the, the deep tie that, uh, that we see between the, the porn industry and the the easy transition from the porn industry into uh, commercial sex. Wow. Um, and so when you were asking about Michael, you were asking about you know sort of how do we how do we start to um, get engaged in doing something about this? I think in raising up particularly young men in particular and and finding ways to have these conversations out loud that there is no such thing as uh, you know pornography and and then this next level being a victimless crime. Oftentimes. You know, we talk about pornography as being uh, simply the mass consumption mm -hmm. of commercial sex as mm -hmm. a, you know, as opposed to buying a particular individual, you're buying an industry uh, of commercial sex uh, through that habit. So, I, um, and then, then there are just uh, courageous ways in which uh, men of greater character are stepping up and helping to, to hold other men accountable in, mm -hmm. in the midst of this. Let me just say one thing about labor trafficking yeah. as well. We've talked a lot about sex trafficking. Sheldon Zhang's research out of SDSU shows that labor trafficking may be an even larger phenomenon in San Diego than is uh, sex trafficking. And so stepping up, and so when not just not buying sex, but also being concerned about like if you're a business owner and you're hiring a company in town and somebody's bidding very low on their contracts uh, for you to outsource or you're ready to hire somebody to do your lawns. Uh, and, and those prices are too good to be true. They're just so low. Mm -hmm. Why are they so good to be true? Yeah, yeah. Because somebody is getting exploited in the middle. And it's, and it's uh, construction contractors and, it, and it's the, 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 you know, some of the factories and industry in the yeah. area. It's small and larger scale businesses. So, you know, there's this exploitation happening at that labor level as well. So I didn't, didn't want to stop this show without saying, whoa, there's a whole nother monster to be talked about here. Yeah. And this is not... Um, it, this is not something that uh, we can ignore. It's something we have to get involved yeah, with. Please don't ignore um, this. It's something that uh, it's not going to go away by people just ignoring it. It's something you actually have to plug into and say, I got to make a difference here. And so I just really encourage you. Um, the break free run is happening uh, September 12th, 2015, 7.30 a.m. This is uh, Tecolote Park, Mission Bay. It's a 5K and 10K walk to raise money to help rescue people from human trafficking. There's hope. If you're out there, you know people, or you yourself are involved, there's hope. You don't have to, there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and Jesus Christ is always offering hope. And uh, these practical applications, uh, using the law to fight this kind of stuff that's destroying people's lives, um, this is what we need to do. We need to get involved and uh, support the district attorney, support law enforcement, support the involvement of the schools in recognizing this and educating uh, the teachers and the students, um, all ways we can make a difference. And it doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, if you're in high school, like Michael Bailey here, uh, and you want to just start to keep an eye about it, become more aware about what's going on. Um, and parents being more involved in your in your children's lives. And, and like Dr. Gates is saying, hey, when you get more involved in your children's lives, well, very likely you're going to be brushing shoulders with the kids of other parents. And you have an opportunity to keep a lookout for them. And, uh, you know, we have kind of a neighborhood watch here going on and uh, just uh, keeping ourselves aware and involved. So uh, this has been a fantastic show. I want to give the websites again, uh, fighthumantraffickingsd.com. Uh, that's the district attorney's website. And you can go there to report things that you're seeing. I know somebody just the other day was telling me they saw this happening right along the street. They were driving along and they saw somebody uh, going after a girl right there. 
You can call 888-373-7888 if you want to report something that's going on. You can text be free um, to to inform the the, uh, authorities about this kind of stuff. You can also call 619-531-4041. That's a local number, 619-531-4041. You can get involved with uh, Churches Against Trafficking, about, about 80 churches that they've got that are involved in fighting this and organizing. Uh, Dr. Gates here, uh, very much involved with that. Their website's abolishhumantrafficking.com. I hope this show has been a big help to you, a big blessing to you. And I just want to thank you guys so much for coming on the air. Thank Thank you, Kevin. Absolutely. And Michael, thanks for asking two awesome questions. Great job, Michael. Thank you. (laughs) You did good good job for your first time on radio. That was fantastic. And... uh, Guys, you can get a recording of this lesson, uh, this lesson, I'm used to teaching here. Uh, You can get a recording of this show tomorrow on my website, educateforlife.org. And uh, it's podcast, it's on iTunes, it's on YouTube, the YouTube channel. So uh, I hope that you can go out there and make a difference and uh, be a positive influence in our culture, in our society. And uh, I want to share one last scripture with you. It's Matthew 18, 4 through 6. It says, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And uh, that's a powerful statement. Um, Christ is saying, hey, uh, love these kids, reach out to these kids, offer hope to these kids. So I hope you have a great evening tonight, and uh, we'll see you next week. We're going to be talking next week with Dr. David Levy of UCSD on the impact that prayer has on the brain. He's a uh, uh, just author of a book, uh, Gray Matter, and a very interesting... um, radio show we'll have talking about that. We'll see you next week. Have a great night.